it's a two part lab. Um, one part deals with, or I guess it's got two different sets of equipment. One of them works with what's called the world's simplest motor. Um, that's the, the kit provider's name. I think if you just Google search words, the simplest motor, you'll find that. It's uh, uh, this, and uh, I guess the they in the instruction, they had the people using battery body to have this coil of wire. That's what's important. And with the coil of wire, um, with the end just stripped a little bit, you can uh, have this arrangement. This is the magnet placed here. This coil of wire hanging over a magnet, uh, connected in such a way that it'll be connected to a battery. It'll it, it turns like a motor. So it's a motor, <laughs> and it's the world's simplest motor because it is the fewest parts you can imagine. Now it's a bit of a I think in mark in marketing legal terms it's called the what puffery. Uh, it's not the simplest motor. In fact, I believe homopolar motor is even simpler. Um, so, um, so this is the lab uh, working with these two simplest possible arrangements that illustrates magnetic force on a current uh, um, carrying wire. And if that's the only thing one might ask, so why didn't we do this earlier? We were covering magnetic force like three weeks ago, so we could have done this earlier. Why now? Why now is we needed the Faraday's law to describe some of the restrictions on the operation of a motor. So, so that's why we are, um, yeah. And I think one of the questions get at that, uh, yeah. Something like um, the two different questions, um, one about the um, measure the frequency of rotation and you know, question of uh, what parameter limits how quickly the motor can turn. And in the lab, as you're doing the experiment, you would find that, oh, it's the voltage that, um, that, that determines the turning speed of the motor. If you increase the voltage somehow, then it'll turn faster. If you decrease the voltage, it turns slower. And the, and, and, and connect, that connection can be explained the best using Faraday's law. And the other question gets at that um, when you are looking at this uh, arrangement with a battery in here, a wire connecting one end to the other end of the battery, it'll look like we have shorted the two ends of the battery. In fact, the homopolar motor, yeah, we are shorting the top to the bottom. And if you remember when we were doing circuits, that's the one thing I tell people not to do. It's a safety hazard. And so this question is getting at, um, why is that not a safety hazard when you do it with a motor? And, um, and the reason is Faraday's law induced the voltage. And in fact, uh, the thing to be careful with when you're working with a motor is that if you somehow brought the motor to a stop, you know, apply a torque so that prevent it from turning, that's actually dangerous for the motor. Uh, because at that point, you no longer have induced voltage that's opposing the voltage of the power supply. And you might have a situation where too much current flows through the wire and causes other damage to the motor. Um, so, yeah, you know, as long as the motor is running, it's safe. The current output is limited and, uh, yeah. So, so let me start out with the demonstration of these two setups. You've heard me describe them now, but you know, uh, video is a lot better than my words. So let me just uh, uh, show you the operation of the motor. Okay, let me change my share setting. So this is the world's simplest motor. Um, I want you to show you the individual parts. This is the plastic holder that holds everything. There are the electrodes that go on the two ends uh, to connect the battery to the wire. Yeah, I fiddle with it for a bit to figure out which way it goes. Uh, and that's the battery. It's used for two different yeah. a cylinder reference and as a power source. But anyways, I'm gonna uh, oh and the magnet. I'm gonna put this away. I already assembled it. Um, because I want you to be short. And 
What am I doing? Oh, I want you to show the electrode for some reason. <laughs> okay, that's the coil of wire. Um, so it's enamel coated, so it's uh, uh, insulated between each loop. Now, at the end, if you look at it carefully, you'll see a little bit of a shin. That's where the enamel has been stripped off. Now, it might look like it hasn't been stripped off uniformly, and that is on purpose. They, uh, if it's uh, stripped off uh, perfectly uniformly, then um, the motor shouldn't work technically because um, basically the net torque over a whole rotation adds up to zero. Now, in experiment, it turns out uh, not to really work out that way. Even if you uh, strip it all the way around, it still works. I imagine because the... The electrical connection we make is such a poor connection that as the thing turns, there's a enough asymmetry that um, it still works. But anyways, the kind of instruction is to strip one side and you want to kind of figure out uh, when the stripped side is in contact that there's a torque on the wire. So, so that's what I'm showing in the video, the stripped uh, portions of the wire where electrical contact will be made. You might say moving a little bit funny. Uh, but sometimes you need to give it a little kickstart so that it's not stuck in a dead zone. Yeah, there it is. Or <laughs> the simplest motor. Um, and it'll basically run in that configuration indefinitely until the battery runs out. You know, it, uh, it could run for quite a few number of minutes or how, I don't know how long. Um, yeah, so. And so here I'm trying to do something to demonstrate something but i don't think it really worked i want you to me measure the the voltage at the two ends to illustrate how the voltage of the battery measured while the motor is running is different from voltage measured um, when it is not in fact that's how people measure the frequency of that um uh, rotation uh, with the oscilloscope um, not uh, digital multimeter but uh, this didn't really work out because uh, let me just skip ahead because uh, when I remove it and uh, do it without the wire, it's uh, so I think it's just a bad contact. So anyways, let me just skip this portion. <laughs> it didn't end up demonstrating what I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, and yeah, and I'm just trying to get the motor running again. In the future, I'll probably uh, resplice this video so that I can just uh, transition from where the motor is running to where it's no longer running. Um, but uh, this is simple. The motor. It is so unreliable, you know. So it was working great just a few minutes ago. Now it's uh, not so much. Uh, but I think uh, even in it, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think as it swings back and forth, you can kind of see that there must be a force other than just gravity making it swing back and forth like pendulum. Yeah. Anyway, so this video is going to be ending. And I'll splice them in a more presentable format in a, for a future class. <laughs> but uh, this is the world's simplest motor. Uh, that's all the parts there is. I think you can buy the kit for like 5 or $10 pretty cheap. Um, and, uh, and you could swap out this magnet here for a better magnet. Um, I've tried it uh, with a stronger neodymium magnet. didn't work out all that much better. Um, I think maybe because... Um, well, it didn't work out that much better. Uh, I, I think ideally you want uniform magnetic field over the entire region. And when I describe the um, the working parts of the motor in a little bit, um, I'll be assuming basically the whole current carrying coil is in a uniform magnetic field, uh, which you know is not the experimental setup, but you know, big huge magnets are expensive, so. Um, and this kit is a very cheap kit. That's what it comes down to. Okay, let me show you the homopolar motor. I think that's uh, less commonly known, so uh, it'll be fun. It's also very simple. It has um, a battery, AA battery, and it's got magnets at both ends. It doesn't have to be. It can be just magnet on, on one end. Um, I just want you to because these magnets are actually playing one more role in this demo. They also serve as a conductor. Um, the coating that's around the neodymium magnet, it's electrically conducting. So the magnets that's stuck at the bottom basically play, provide a, a surface of contact for electrical contact. 
and this uh, washer up here, it's not necessary for any electrical or magnetic reason. It's necessary for a mechanical reason. I am going to place the um, the wire that um, in this well so that it doesn't fall out as easily. So so that's the whole setup. Uh, so I have a bar magnet with a source uh, with a voltage source that can provide the current for the wire I'm gonna uh, touch. That's one part of the homopolar motor. And this is the other part. It's just a piece of wire. And I guess one difference from the previous <laughs> Sorry, it's going to take a few tries. I'm going to skip through some of these minutes. Um, so the diff one main difference of this wire from the previous uh, wire for the coil that you have seen is that this is not coded. Um, it, it's not enamel coded. The entire copper is exposed or unless it kind of is. It had a bit of a tarnish on it that I had to send the paper off. Uh, but it's meant to be just conducting all throughout. So when this portion touches this top, it'll be uh, electrically connected to this uh, a positive voltage end and when these two wires connect this touch this bottom it'll be electrically connected to the uh, negative uh, voltage end or the lower voltage end so um, the most challenging thing about homopolar motor is the kind of mechanical stability it's basically a, a cloth hanger that's <laughs> just hanging um so i'll show you a couple failed tries and then and you know the way the wire moves weirdly that is actually a, a magnetic force that's pushing the wire except i didn't want it pushed it that way um, so let me just keep ahead a little bit there's a uh attempt that worked even okay okay yeah, okay that attempt worked okay so as i make the contact so yeah. okay there so uh, so there's a contact made at the top. So the current is flowing from this top portion to the bottom portion here. And as the current flows is where the magnetic fields, um, magnetic fields uh, 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 exert magnetic force on the current carrying wire and the whole thing becomes a motor. It's called a homopolar motor because that's the uh, design of this uh, arrangement that's different from the other motor you have seen. In the other motor, we had to deliberately um, make the electrical connection asymmetric so that um, basically the pole of the electromagnet in the coil of loop, that pole switches. So the direction of the magnetic pole that's uh, produced by current is changing as it turns one full turn. In this arrangement, it doesn't change. The direction of current stays constant throughout the entire revolution. That's why it's called a homopolar motor. So um, let's see. Yeah, so this demo is not the best. The bottom support kind of came off. But you can kind of see it work. Uh, you know, every time this wire makes a little bit of contact, current flows a little bit, so it pushes the wire a little. It goes on for a while. <laughs> it might have actually gone on that way forever if I didn't stop it. Uh, but I wanted to, uh, there was one arrangement that worked a little bit better in terms of, you know, getting it to spin faster. I, I think that attempt is towards the end. So let me just check this one and then I'll, yeah, I think I'm going to, Okay, skip ahead. Um, maybe that one. Oh yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I mean, so you know, it's not mechanically super stable, so eventually it pops off. But um, let me see if I can. Um, ah, okay. I think in this view, I have access to this advanced uh, uh, control to advance it. Frame by frame. So what I'm doing here is kind of difficult to. Okay. So when the contact is made, then it's gonna spin. Okay. 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 Now here I actually don't know the direction of the magnet because these neodymium magnets don't come. Uh, 
don't, they don't come labeled. Um, but I think I can actually figure out the, the polarity of the magnet from observation of how this loop is spinning. So, okay, I think uh, this is a good view to kind of draw pictures on. So let me just uh, um, draw some pictures. So, um, I, I know the direction of my battery. So my battery has positive end here, negative end here, which means the current in this wire is flowing from here to, um, to here. And this is uh, the, the way the, uh, let me draw the other current as well. So I can do this analysis for one side and the other side would be basically identical in terms of the directions and whatnot. Um, so um, as you we imagine looking at it from top, the direction in which the loop of wire is spinning is counterclockwise. So I'll just uh, make a notation here that here the velocity is into the screen, here the velocity is out of screen, and it's kind of spinning this way, but that direction makes sense. Okay, so um, <laughs> I gotta figure out. Um, um, so here, do I want the magnetic field? Um, so in this portion, I want the magnetic force uh, in the direction out of the screen, um, here in the direction into the screen, so so that's the direction of force I want. So, uh, so you know, some um, some pointing uh, out of and and the the expression for magnetic force for reference, uh, magnetic force on a current carrying loop is I L cross B. So my direction of thumb I want it out of the screen. Uh, my direction of current I want it. Uh, so current is going that way. Okay, okay, okay. Current is going that way, force that way. So I want my magnetic field to be uh, to be pointing downward. <laughs> so if my magnetic field here is mostly pointing downward, that's what. Um, yeah, so let me just make sure that it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I want the magnetic field in this region to be pointing downward. Then if you go through the same analysis here, you'll see that magnetic field pointing downward here will also result in, you know, uh, um, L cross B uh, results in force pointing into the screen. So, okay, I think I'm almost there. So all of that means my magnetic pole at the top must be the south pole so that magnetic fields are pointing kind of towards it. And my magnetic pole at the bottom must be north pole. And when I stuck these new demo magnets, I made sure they were all oriented the same way so that um, they are adding to each other, so strength not subtracting. So with that determination of poles in mind, what the magnetic fields actually look like will be more similar to magnetic fields of a bar magnet. So something like, you gotta be careful, something like this uh, is uh, um, what the magnetic fields look like. Now, in terms of the relative orientation of the magnetic field and um, kind of direction of the wire, it's, uh, you know, they are not nice 90 degrees. They are all at these angles. So you can see that it's not going to be super, um, um, super efficient. <laughs> um, and, and it, you know, uh, there are big sections of the current carrying portion that so either not in the um, so as when I imagine the the magnetic field due to a dipole, I can imagine outward going magnetic field that's going to be causing some force on this section of current carrying wire. But I think uh, there will be a kind of a pairwise symmetry. And since the current is in the same direction that, oh, you know what? This is probably what's contributing to the loop just uh, uh, flipping over, uh, I think, maybe. 
<laughs> I don't know. Um, but, you know, there are portions of wire that will be in a region of magnetic field that's going to uh, produce force in the correct direction so that there will be a net torque about this uh, center of rotation. So, so anyways, that's, uh, the, uh, that's the homopolar motor that operates uh, uh, that operate, uh, kind of this way. <laughs> the current flowing through the loop of wire, it's uh, causing those forces to be exerted on the on the wire, so the so it rotates like this. But uh, it'll pop out in a little bit. Let's see. Wait. Oh, I'm stuck. Yeah, VLC doesn't like this frame by frame thing. It gets stuck after a while. All right. <laughs> um. Wait. Is that stopping? Don't know. All right, <laughs> just stop it all together. <laughs>